Cheryl, a rising junior at Los Altos High School. Hi everyone, my name is Bella Katsianis or Isabella Katsianis and I'm an upcoming senior at Palo Alto High School. Hey everyone, my name is Ava Gomez and I'm a rising junior at St. Francis High School in Mountain View. I am honored to have the privilege to begin this video about this new innovative way of teaching students at their developmental age instead of their chronological age, also known as active learning. I was introduced to Magical Bridge by my little brother, Mateo. He is 10 years old right now, and he's one of the most playful and energetic kids on the block. Hi, I'm Mateo, and I have X-linked juvenile retinoschisis. I went to Magical Bridge because I thought it would be a safe playground to play around in, and it would be safe for my disease. X-linked juvenile retinoschisis is a disease where you, your eyes, in the, your retina in your eyes uh, has a glue that isn't very strong. Everyone has a glue, but it's stronger than normal, usually. Stronger than mine. And my glue isn't very strong. So if it so, if, like, let's say a basketball hits me in the head, this is why I can't play basketball or soccer, let's say, or anything that can hit me in the head, then it could, it, the, the glue isn't very strong, so it'll pop, and then I'll have a retinal detachment, and then I'll have to lay my head downwards for 22 hours a day for a whole month. So I'll only get two hours outside, and that would be bad. So... The Magical Bridge Playground is a place where I could maybe have, be able to play things with other people and have a good time. Thank you. Bye. I've always been so inspired about how he handles everything, especially since rarely any school sports teams or PE classes accommodate his needs. And I've always wondered what I can do to help this often overlooked community. So one of the reasons why I wanted to join the Magical Bridge Foundation is because I'm in the Best Buddies Club and that's a club where you get paired with a student in the special education department and you you are their friend, you're their mentor, you're their guide to um, high school. But while I was in that club, I felt like I wasn't doing enough to interact and help my fellow students with disabilities. So I applied to the Magical Bridge Foundation. It was more about um, making people of all abilities feel welcome in anything they do. I think that's incredibly important. And um, also as someone who has a learning ability, it was incredibly hard for me to advocate for myself when it came to extra time or taking a test in a different environment. I was, oh, I always thought that I was asking for too much or I was a burden on my teachers. So even though I have this learning disability, I'm able to speak for myself and advocate for myself. And I, I wanted to use that privilege to advocate for those who can and are unable to speak for themselves. I first got involved with Magical Bridge through my affiliation with the National Charity League. So over the last few months, my team and I have been closely working together to learn all about the potential benefits and possibilities of active learning. And I'm super hopeful that this often overlooked community can finally get adequate attention in the education system. Together, the three of us have teamed up with Alenka Villarreal the founder of Magical Bridge. As well as Sarah Lundgren and Lisa Shannon, who have taught us the ins and outs of active learning so that we can share this wonderful information with you all and how it can improve the lives of everyone.
Hi, I'm Alenka Villarreal. I'm the CEO and the founder of the Magical Bridge Foundation. I'm particularly excited for you to join us on this journey as we explore what active learning means, specifically for members of our school communities that present very differently cognitively than they do physically. Children like my own Ava, who is a rising senior at Palo Alto High School, but developmentally hovers more in the preschool or kindergarten age groups. So for those learners, we um, invite the schools, the districts, to consider teaching them at their developmental level. Many times Ava is found in situations where she is doing things that are not meaningful to her, delivering mail, taking orders for lunch services. That is more passive learning, and she may or may not realize why she's doing that. If she were to go back to the developmental level where she is and what's meaningful to her, perhaps parallel play, she would make advances, maybe slower than others, but indeed still make advances. And so as this is considered an innovative approach, personally, I feel like this would be a very impactful approach for all learners, but specifically those with disabilities and specifically those that are most impacted with disabilities in our society where they could learn really at their level. And wouldn't that be a magical way to approach education? Enjoy. Thank you. As you will see, the possibilities of active learning are seemingly endless, as this approach is helpful for disabled individuals with unmatched developmental ages, as well as patients with Alzheimer's. If schools can place more emphasis on developmental age than chronological age, teens like Ava and Dean will be able to learn at their own pace. While they may take more time to learn and progress than other students, progress is still progress. It is up to the community and educators to work together to put these models and ideas to use for the benefit of everyone. It is important to recognize that disabilities are not what disables the individual. It is the lack of the right accommodations that disable and limit the individual. We have made a series of six videos, including this one, describing and discussing the intricacies of active learning including a step-by-step -step of every session that we took under the incredible guidance of Sarah Lundgren and Lisa Shannon. We hope that we continue your interest and that you're able to watch these videos. We look forward to a post-COVID-19 time where we can apply what we've learned about active learning and visit teens in our community and bring a bit more magic into everyone's lives. Since we have not yet had the opportunity to spend time practicing active learning concepts in the developmentally young, we observed videos of both Alenka's daughter, Ava, and Sarah Lundgren's son, Dean, who is 20 years old chronologically. We were introduced to active learning by Sarah, who has a personal connection to this kind of work through her son, and Lisa Shannon, an occupational therapist who also works with the developmentally young. Together, their expertise gave us an incredible introduction to the potentials of active learning, and we look forward to our future steps to make active learning opportunities available in all schools for all kids. So thank you so much to Lisa and Sarah. It is our privilege to contribute what we can to an often overlooked community during a time like now. We hope that you enjoy and have a magical day.